happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking by My Shells. I'm drinking a Diet Coke today because I'm hungover, don't at me. So my name is Emma and today I'm going to do my February Let Me Entertain You video. This is just where I tell you about all of the books and movies and TV and everything I've been really enjoying this month. To give you some good entertaining suggestions for your life. I'm going to start with books and I actually am going to tell you about five books. I usually just do like my top two but I've had such a good reading month. Like this isn't even all of the good books I've read. I've loved almost everything that I've read for weeks which is not the norm for me. I've become quite fussy about books because I read so many so I've just been like bowled away, bowled over, blown away, whatever the right word is for that by how much I've really enjoyed everything I've read for the last few weeks. But I'm going to tell you about my five absolute favourite books. These are five books I have legit loved this month. I'll start with the best, my five star read of the month. That was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was so excited for this one. So Taylor Jenkins Reid's last book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. You don't need me to tell you how good it was. The whole of Booktube is completely in love with it. And it's been almost two full years since I read that book and adored that book. So I've just been waiting excitedly to see what Taylor Jenkins Reid does next. And Daisy Jones and the Six was it even better? Days Jones and the Six is once again about a famous person. I love books about famous people and Taylor Jenkins Reid does them really well. So this is actually about several famous people. It's about a band and it's written as if it's like a documentary. They are turning it into a movie or a TV show, I think. Reese Witherspoon's doing it. Bless her, I love Reese Witherspoon, so I'm really excited. I think it'll work really well on screen. But yeah, it's kind of written as if it's like this non-fiction book about a real band called The Six and an artist called Daisy Jones, who were popular in the 70s. So it's written as if it's like a transcript of interviews. It's a very unusual way of writing it. So it's kind of like when you're watching a documentary and you get the little snippets of the talking heads, it's kind of like reading the transcript of all of those, which is great and it's really clever because often the things they say kind of contradict each other, so you get slightly different points of view on things. It's basically a love story and about the different ways that you can love different people in your life. So the main characters are essentially Billy, the lead singer of the band, and Daisy Jones. And they come together for this album and they write songs together and they have this very, very intense relationship. But here's the thing, Billy is married to this woman, Camille, Camilla, who he is passionately in love with and has been for years and years and years and they have this wonderful relationship together. And I don't want to say too much without kind of telling you what does or doesn't happen between all the characters, but it's, I really liked the way that there are these different kinds of love that are explored and none of them are more or less real than the others, um, but about choosing what's important to you. Oh, I loved it so much. And it's just really fun. But it's like weird reading it when it's talking about these songs and I really wanted to listen to the songs, but you can't because they don't exist. And there's like one bit where it talks about like the photo shoot for the band cover. And it sounded like this amazing, iconic album cover. And I really wanted to then Google the picture. And it was like, why doesn't this picture exist? So I'm so excited for the TV show when I'm assuming they will actually write songs and we'll be able to see this stuff and hear this stuff. So that'll be really great. And Taylor Jenkins Reid was, I think, inspired by the Civil Wars. Do you remember the band The Civil Wars? I didn't know this about them until my friend Ellen told me all about their like insane love story. And I became obsessed with it. And it's very much similar to Daisy Jones and the Six in that they wrote all these songs together and there's this amazing bond and you watch them perform together and they're like so in sync with each other but she is married to the band's manager and then no one really knows what happened but the band broke up and they don't talk to each other anymore and there's all these rumours and we don't know what happened. I don't want to speculate except that I am speculating constantly was it the same as in Daisy Jones and the Six. <sighs> I want to read it again already and I'm so excited for the TV show. But I've also got four more books I loved. These are all four star reads for me. Number one is Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. So this one I've actually already read twice. It's so unique and weird and wonderful. So it's about this woman named Harriet who lives in a house with her daughter Perdita and she makes this gingerbread. And she got the recipe from her family, generations of her family who lived in this country called Druhastrana, which doesn't exist apparently. Like within the book, Wikipedia tells them that this country doesn't exist, but she's like, well, it does because I grew up there. And this gingerbread has these like kind of seemingly magical properties that just affect people so much back in Druhasjana, whereas in London, people are like, meh, take it or leave it. And they seem to like actively almost not see it. Like, she bakes it for the parents in her class and they just all like don't see it or they like, don't take it with them. It's just strange. You don't know what's happening. And her daughter, Perdita, loves this gingerbread, but she's gluten intolerant, so she can't eat the gingerbread. 
And the book starts with one day Harriet comes home and finds that Perdita has been baking the gingerbread from the recipe and she finds her unconscious on the bed. But there's a note where Perdita says that she has eaten the gingerbread to take her to Juhostrana and to kind of research her mother's past and meet her mother's childhood best friend, Gretel. So we get a lot of it is flashbacks of Harriet's past in Juhostrana and how she came to be in London. And then in present day, we see her relationship with her daughter and how stilted that is. And also they live in this house where they have four dolls who are half doll, half plant, and they talk. So the whole time that Harriet's telling her story to the semi-unconscious Perdita, the dolls are also there listening and also chipping in with their own comments about the story. It's completely bizarre, but I just loved it. It was just this like magical whirlwind that just transported me into this whole other world. So I'm filming a video for Book Break next week and I'm gonna be talking about gingerbread in there. And when I was like writing my bullet points for it, I wanted to say that the book is like gingerbread. It was in sweet and <laughs> sticky <laughs> and also very dark. And then I was like, Emma, you can't say that to people. That's not a normal thing to say. So I've said it here instead, but it is like that. Sticky is a weird word to describe a book, but it is. It's like you get stuck in the world and it's so kind of odd and delicious. <laughs> Stop making gingerbread comparisons. Really interesting book that I actually now want to read again because I feel like every time I read it I'll find different things to notice about the story and to think what the story is actually about. Is it about family? Is it about belonging? Is it about community? Is it about home? Is it about gingerbread? Who knows? All of those things and more. Okay, I read two historical fictions this month which and loved them, which is surprising because I generally am not interested in historical fiction, but I really enjoyed both of these. So the first one was The Age of Light, which is about the photographer Lee Miller. And I didn't really know anything about her, so it was cool to learn about her life, and I've been like stalking, googling her a lot <laughs> since then. So it's set in 1930s Paris, and Lee Miller, who is this young model who also likes taking pictures, and she's an artist, comes to Paris and she meets the photographer Man Ray, who is very, very famous. And she says that she wants to be his assistant and he doesn't take assistance, but she's like, nope, I'm here, I'm gonna do it. So she does, and she's just great. And it was just so much fun to read about how together they came up with this new photography technique called solarization, and you can actually go and look at the pictures that they took. Um, and that's really cool. And she was his muse and she did model for him, but it totally kind of subverts that story because she was actually such a talented photographer in her own right. And even when she models for him, she has ideas for how the photos should look. So even though he sees her as his muse, she very much does not want to fit that role and doesn't allow herself to fit that role. She actually is his co-worker and she teaches him some things and she's constantly learning from him and it was really fun. It was really good fun. And she's just this fascinating woman. There's scenes in the book from later in her life where she was a photojournalist during the war, but that's not the main bit of the story. So if you do read the book, I then really recommend you go and read about her life afterwards because it's just fascinating. She was a really interesting, amazing artist. And I did, again, talk about that one on book break. The video should be up now. Yes, it is. I'll link it below uh, where I got to go to the camera museum and see the type of camera that she would have used and talked about other artists that inspired books. And that was a fun video. And here's a fun little tidbit for you. I'm going to tell you. So when I first filmed that video, I talked about various other artists who inspired books. One of them was this artist called Camille Claudel, who inspired the book Rodin's Lover, because she worked with Rodin. And when I first filmed the video, I went through the whole thing pronouncing his name I mean, I don't even know. Slightly differently each time I said it. Often Rodin, sometimes Rodin. I know that it's Rodin, but in the moment I completely forgot how you're supposed to say his name. So I didn't want the internet laughing at me, so I then dubbed over the top me saying Rodin and merged them together. I feel like you can definitely tell, but go and watch that video and don't give my secrets away in the comments. Don't tell them that you know, but just see if you can tell that I'm actually in a totally different room when I'm saying Rodin as opposed to the rest of the sentence. Okay, the other historical fiction that I read was called The Glove Maker, and this one really didn't think it was gonna be my type of thing, and I loved it. It's not really about glove making. It's got this very beautiful pair of gloves on the front cover, and I, that's just not the title that describes to me what this book is about. It should be called Mormons Doing Mormon Things, because it's about Mormons, and that is way more interesting to me. So it's set in 1880s Utah, 
And it's inspired by this true story about these settlers, these Mormon settlers who started this new little town called Junction. And there were just eight families in the town. It's just, I mean, like, mind-boggling to me. When I was reading it, I kept being like, but they must be so bored. What do they do all day when it's snowing and they're trapped in their house and they can't call each other or watch TV or they don't even describe having, like, books to read? What do they do? They just sit there and stare at the tables. The main character, this glove maker called Deborah, this man comes and knocks at Deborah's door and he is on the run from the law. And so she, they have the system in place for what happens because there are lots of Mormons on the run from the law because the law does not like them having multiple wives. So she shelters him in her barn for the night and then sends him to her brother-in-law um, who will help him escape to the next town. And they do this, but they know it's very, very dangerous because if they get caught by the lawmakers, <laughs> by the sheriffs, the marshals, um, they will be in masses of trouble and their homes will be burnt to the ground. So they have to really make sure that nobody sees that they helped this man. So it's not like the super action-packed story. It's all quite sort of slow moving, but really, really tense and gripping because it's all happening in this tiny town and it's really snowy. So everywhere they go, they're leaving footprints. They have to think about literally every step they take and how they're going to explain it and how they're going to communicate with each other. It's really like claustrophobic and tense and I loved it. And it was this real village where just these tiny eight families lived. And apparently it was somewhere where people would come through on the run from the law. Fascinating. Maybe it turns out I do like historical fiction all this time. What was the last one I read? Oh yeah, the fifth book I'm gonna tell you about is The Distance Home by Paula Saunders. And warning, this book is incredibly sad, which I love, I love bleak books. I did that whole video about really bleak books and really happy books. It was called something else, but I can't remember. Glum or Gleeful, <laughs> I'll link to that below. I really like books that are just very bleak throughout, like Road Ends by Mary Lawson. This was very reminiscent of Road Ends or of Stoner, one of those. So it's about this family, these siblings. There are three siblings, but the youngest one, Jane, like, isn't really important. So basically it's about Renee and Leon. And we see them grow up, and they both love to dance. They're both amazing at ballet. But the father hates that in Leon. He thinks it's weak and feminine and loves it in Renee. So the way that the father treats them differently is terrible and so unfair. And then the mother, to make up for it, becomes so angry and has so much resentment at Renee because she thinks that Renee is stealing Leon's thunder and ruining his life. So it's basically just a book about like the two world's worst parents who between them manage to just completely fuck up one of their children each. And we know right from the beginning in the first chapter we see Renee on her way to her mother's funeral and we know at that point that the brother Leon has already died at that point. So we know he's not going to have a great bright future ahead of him. And we just watch them grow up and it's again one of those books that is slow moving. Not a ton of stuff happens though Leon does have some really terrible things happen to him along the way. But it's just this gentle story of watching them grow up and watch the damage that is done to them by their family. It's cheery stuff. It literally is so sad. I got to the end, I was loving it. And I got to the end and was like, what? <laughs> so I went back to the office and was like, has anyone else read this book? Is it, did I miss something? Is it just really sad? And they were like, yeah, no, you didn't miss anything. It's just really sad. So warning, it's really sad but it's beautiful and I loved it. So cool, those are five books that I legit loved and think that you should read. Oh, my legs have cramped up. But while you're here and looking to be entertained, I'm gonna tell you about some of my other favorite things that I've been doing this month. So let's go to music. I have a new favorite song. I've listened to it on repeat. The first day that I heard it, I listened to it on repeat for two hours. Literally just back to back to back to back, on repeat for two hours. And then I told myself I had to take a break. I wasn't bored of it, but I was just like, Emma, You've listened to it for two hours, that's ridiculous. So I took a half hour break without listening to it and then I really missed it, so I went back to it. And I've listened to it several times a day, every day since then. I'm just doing some stretches because my legs have really cramped up. I should really just stop talking and stretch them out, but you know, I'm a multitasker. So the song is called A Hundred Bad Days by AJR and I really like the lyrics of the chorus, which goes, a hundred bad days made a hundred good stories. A hundred good stories make me interesting at parties. And I love that. And it goes like this. I only meant to play like a 10 second clip of that, but once it started, I couldn't stop. So I listened to the whole thing. 
Anyway, that song is my favourite song of the moment and it's great. But also, I was talking earlier about Daisy Jones and the Six. She actually released a Spotify playlist of the songs that inspired her while she was writing it. So you can search Daisy Jones and the Six on Spotify and it'll come up. And the first song is a song by the Civil Wars. So she definitely knows about the drama that went down there and definitely was thinking about them when she wrote it. And it's also just got lots of other songs that are kind of the vibe of the album in the book. So it gives you something to imagine in lieu of actually being able to listen to the album that doesn't exist. It breaks my heart. Okay, that was music. Um, movies and TV. I actually haven't really been watching much TV this month, but I did watch a movie I hadn't seen before. It's not a new movie, but it's called Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. You might have seen it. It's got Steve Carell in it and Kira Knightley, and RG and I watched it together, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really sweet, odd little film. It's about the end of the world. So right at the beginning of the movie, it's sort of the background is that there's been this asteroid heading towards Earth people have known about and they've been trying to stop it. And right at the beginning we see Steve Carell with his wife sitting in the car as the radio says the operation to stop the asteroid failed and so we're now approaching the end of days and we have like, I can't remember how long, three weeks or something. And it's just this dark comedy about the end of the world. So the main story is Steve Carell, his wife runs away literally in that first scene so he's like, oh great, I'm alone. Um, and he goes on this kind of road trip to find the woman that he used to love and he brings his neighbour Penny who he's never really met before but she lives in his building because she wants to get to a plane to get back to England where her family are. And it's their road trip and it's really sad and sweet but also really funny. Especially at the beginning there are all these really funny scenes with how Steve Carell's friends react to it being the end of the world. So yeah, that was a nice little film. I mean Steve Carell and Keira Knightley, odd pairing to put together because of course you probably could have predicted there is going to be a romance that blossoms between them and you know they're not the same age so that stresses me out a bit but i enjoyed the book i mean movie what was it i enjoyed the movie okay and finally i'm going to talk about the booktuber that's been entertaining me this month I'm actually going to talk about two and the first one is me am i allowed to do that i'm going to recommend that you go over to book break because i made a video that I'm really proud of and you should go and play it because it's interactive. It's like Bandersnatch but for books but I actually filmed it before Bandersnatch came out so I just predicted that. And it's basically this Valentine's game for like get matched up with your perfect book so I ask questions and at the end of each video you can click on the end screen depending on your answer and go through. It's like a little flowchart from 90s magazines and get matched up with the book that I recommend to you. So you should go and play it lots and lots and lots of times. Thank you very much. But also I'll recommend a booktuber that isn't myself, and that one is going to be The Booktube Girl. I've been watching a lot of her lately, and she started doing these really thoughtful, interesting videos about her life. So her most recent one was called The Biracial Battle, I think, and it was about her identity and her kind of engaging with all the different parts of her and how those parts of her are kind of at war with each other. Like literally, the countries that she's come with have been at war with each other. So it was a really sweet and powerful video. It was only like three minutes long. I loved it. So go and watch the booktube girl. I think she's ace. She's only like, how old is she? 18? I don't know. She's young and interesting. Well that's it. I hope that you are entertained. So do subscribe to this channel because I post new videos every Friday and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment below letting me know what's been entertaining you this month. If you watched any really good movies or TV shows that I should know about. See you next time.